All right, abdomen and thorax evaluation. First, your ABCs, you're gonna check for an open airway, um, check for breathing, circulation. You're gonna take a past history and a present history. Are there any unusual sounds? Like, is there evidence of a pneumothorax? Is there crepitus um, with breathing? Is there a sucking sound when breathing? Um, any unusual sensations indicating nerve damage or breathing problems? And then you're gonna inspect for the usual swelling, discoloration, deformity. Uh, look for abnormal breathing patterns. So with pneumothorax, you know, is there one side chest rise, one side there's not. Um, and also check for signs of shock. You know, is a person going into shock? Deviated trachea, so is the trachea off to one side or not? Um, that could indicate pneumothorax as well. Hemotysis or hematuria. Hematuria is blood in the urine. Hemotysis is uh, coughing up blood. Checking for that. Breasts, obviously, for the sake of this, you'd just say I would check if there's any contusions. Um, or you'd ask. You could ask the, the person. And same thing with nipples. You know, are they complaining with anything about heat rash or what we talked about with cyclist nipples or runner's nipples? Palpation. We're going to do some bony palpation to check for fractures and luxations. Um, you're going to assess the, the clavicle. Maybe I need to go like this. Assess the, the clavicle, the shaft, the SC joint, the AC joint out at the shoulder for fracture, sprains, uh, luxation. The sternum, uh, the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process down below. Um, for fracture, ribs, so one-handed, this will be hard, but you're going to, you know, palpate the body of the ribs. Obviously, obviously, if your person's a female patient, just be aware of that for this, for this lab exercise. Um, the costochondral joint, so where the rib meets the cartilage, based on our anatomical pictures we've seen. And the costosternal joints, where the ribs come up and meet the sternum. Checking for fracture and luxation. The thoracic vertebrae, um, so if you have them flip over... and uh, palpate the thoracic vertebrae um, and the costovertebral joints where the vertebrae uh, meet the ribs, checking for luxation. And then if you can flip over again. Uh, soft tissue, you're checking for strains. So the pec major, obviously, if you have a female patient, you know, you just pretend like we're gonna palpate the pec major. The intercostal muscles, there's muscles in between each rib, so you can just practice kind of feeling in between there. Um, hard to palpate intercostal muscles, but you can kind of feel a rib drop off and that's where the muscles are in between each rib. Um, and you can just kind of you know, show that in the, in the video on a couple ribs. Rectus abdominis, um, the ab muscles that run up and down the middle that, uh, can you do a sit up or half a sit up that are in charge of trunk flexion. So go back down. Um, the internal and external internal and external obliques out here abdominal quadrants remember we talked about it's the patient's upper left lower left upper right lower right quadrants and then breasts we're not going to palpate obviously but you would check for contusion special tests you're going to check for abdominal rebound pain um, i might put this back this way for this um, abdominal rebound pain. So I'm on the, the patient's uh, right lower quadrant. So checking for rebound pain, you're going to press in. Sometimes they'll say ow with just the initial pressure. So press in. Okay, that's fine. And then when you let go, if they say ow, when, it, when the organs rebound, um, that's a positive rebound sign. Um, rib compression test, checking for fracture. You're going to compress the rib cage in like this. And then they might say, ow, up at a note. Say you compress them this way and they have pain, you know, over here. That's a sign that maybe there's, there's a fracture in that area. Forced inhalation, you're going to ask your patient to breathe all the way in. So breathe in as far as you can. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep sucking the air in and then relax. And so see if they have pain with forced inhalation, which would indicate an external intercostal strain. And then have them force... Uh, expire their air uh, forcibly. So blow your air out until you can't blow anymore. Blow your air out, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, relax. If they have pain with that, it might be an internal intercostal muscle strain. 
So those are kind of interesting. The, the expiration is internal intercostals. Insp inhalation is external intercostals. Um, Kerr's sign we talked about in lecture, right? So someone can have a spleen injury, but be complaining of left shoulder pain. So just remember that and describe that as you're practicing this. Uh, McBurney's point, appendicitis, um, right where your appendix is, kind of right, right over your appendix where it is in all the anatomical landmarks. That's also called McBurney's point. I think it's about a third of the way over from the umbilicus on the right side. Uh, range of motion tests. You're gonna say I would test these active and passively. So you'd have them, uh, if you could stand up, we'll just do it standing up. So can you uh, flex your trunk forward? Can you extend your trunk backwards? Um, and can you rotate right, rotate left, and then lateral rotate, uh, right, uh, lateral bending, left lateral bending, opposite, so that's right lateral bending, left lateral bending. <laughs> Um, and then we get in, go on to muscle strength. So if you can lay back down, please. Um, so then we'd have for trunk, uh, let's start with trunk flexion, the rectus abdominis, internal, external obliques, and the transverse abdominis. You could just have them do a sit up against um, resistance. So go ahead, try to do a sit up, push up against me, right? Or if they just even go against gravity, you're, you're checking trunk flexion and all those muscles. Trunk rotation, so they can go up into a sit up and then go about halfway, and then you're gonna push against me, cross your arms like this, come up halfway, and then you're gonna push against me, try to rotate towards me, turn towards me, turn towards me, right? And then turn towards the other direction like that, go ahead and relax. Um, and that is for the rectus abdominis as well as the internal and external obliques. And then uh, trunk extension, lay on your stomach. And then we just have them kind of do a reverse sit up, Superman sort of extend your uh, chest off and then if needed you could apply um, resistance there and then lay on your let's just show this maybe on your right side so lay on your right side lateral flexion so we just have her kind of do a side bend lift your trunk off the off the table that way you could apply pressure that way there's multiple ways to do this but we'll just do it the simplest way um, that's for the ipsilateral flexors and extensors and quadratus lumborum, ipsilateral meaning same side. Respiratory muscles, again, we've, we've already kind of tested those earlier, but you know, when, they, when she did forced inhalation, forced exhalation, we checked her respiratory muscles um, of the intercostals and the diaphragm. Um, that's my treadmill going back to its normal spot. So that's all the muscle tests. Then we move to neurological. So beaver sign would be if her, do you mind if we look at your belly button? So if, so here's the belly button, right? If she goes in do, to do like half a crunch, goes to do a sit up and her umbilicus moves up towards her head, that's a neurologic dysfunction. Shows signs either of a neurologic dysfunction of her lower abdominal muscles, like they're too weak to hold her umbilicus where it's supposed to be, or um, neurologic damage, which is causing that weakness, right? Or, or both, right? Um, sensory gets a little tricky. Um, that's why I kind of point to, we'll kind of point to this picture if we can. There we go. And you can see that, um, well, they don't have T1 necessarily, but oh yeah, here it is up into the armpit. So T1 at the armpit, T2 and three are between T1 and T4, and T4 is sort of at the nipple line here, right? So it's this general like T2, T3, T4, and then the next landmark is T6, it's at the xiphoid process. So T5 is between T4 and T6, those landmarks. And then you have, again, the xiphoid process landmark of T6, and then you have T10, which is the navel, and you can see how T7, T8, T9 roll between those two landmarks. And then T12 is the pubis above the inguinal ligament um, down here, right? So then you have T11 in between the umbilicus and then that marker of T12 there. And then the last thing you would do is take a blood pressure. Unfortunately, um, usually we do that in class. Um, we'll try to throw that at you. Um, you know, whenever you guys want, you can come learn that whenever we reopen. 
but definitely in the other classes and in the Kine 62 series, we try to make sure you guys can get a good blood pressure. Um, so for now, you could just say, and I would take a blood pressure. So let me know if you guys have any questions and good luck. Hope that helps.